In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for Colossians. We thank you that you're teaching us how to pray uh, very positively without any negativity in our minds and our hearts for people, for ourselves. Because as believers in Jesus, the best is yet to come. So help us, Lord, to really walk in this word and to really grasp it and give everybody here a word for themselves that will convict them and change them to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father and, and to, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Welcome. Good evening. Buenas noches. Buenas tardes. Okay, everybody say Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Over there, that's our international. Does everybody know that's our international table? We got Haiti, we got Korea, we got the islands, we got. Uh, we got. I mean, it's all over there. I mean, if, you, if you're international, you go to the international table. That is the international table. All right, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. We, we, we learned how to pray last week. Do you like how to pray? Yes. Now, when you pray for people, you got to be positive. You never mention anything negative. Even if the name is Batuni. Okay, amen? May God, verse 11, strengthen you with all power. How many want power? Yes. Now, the, the Greek word again is dunamis. According to his glorious might. Now, you get power according to the might that God has. Is God all what? Powerful. Now, now watch this. You're going to get God. God is almighty, and then he gives you mighty deeds. In Mark chapter 6. God is mighty, almighty, and he gives you mighty deeds. You got it? So all power. When, when Jesus uh, says to us in uh, Mark 6, I can do no mighty works there. How many know God wants to do mighty works? So when, when I do healing masses, I don't say mighty works. I go, oh, these people are filled with faith. Where's the mighty works? How many know I want to see mighty works? And this past year, I have seen mighty works of God. They're called miracles. They can't, they can't be explained. So how many know we all should be living in the supernatural? So God, number one, God is almighty. And number two, flowing from his almighty, we see the mighty deeds. The Greek word is kratos, K. R-A-T-O-S, Mark 6. So, blow it for me. Now, when this happens, there's an amazing thing that happens. Look at verse uh, 11. For all endurance, that means and patience. Everybody remember what patience means? You've got to be patient or you become one, right? <laughs> now, patience means that you have to suffer with people. How many ever had a human being you're like... <laughs> And then you got to be with that person always. And like, what is converting me, present progressive, is 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. And to be patient, hupomone, means to be under suffering. So if you're patient, you've got to suffer along with those interesting people in your life. Anybody have a few of those people? Does anybody have one person that drives you up a wall? Oh, you only have one. That's, that's good. This word for church is Amen. Do you have a person? You have a few. Okay, now, when you have a person that drives you up a wall, cheer because you finally discovered what's inside of them. Amen. Okay. So when that person's in, you just go. Then, then your juices are, are boiling a little bit, right? Then you say, this is, this is the strange me I didn't know was coming out. Then you become heckle and jackal. Okay? Anybody ever been by people? Now, next he says there, uh, verse 12, giving thanks is where we left off. Giving thanks, circle the word, giving thanks. How do you say that in Greek? Eucharistian. Eucharistian. So, giving thanks, giving Eucharistian to. Now, when you give thanks, how many would like to get rid of all your depression? It's very easy. Do you know that all these things I'm telling you are very easy? Are you ever depressed, ma'am? Yes. Because you're not giving thanks all the time. 
Philippians 4, 6, have no anxiety about everything, uh, about anything, but in all things give thanks. thanks. So if you're ever feeling down, sir, no. say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for these past 50 plus years. I'm singing in the rain. Just singing in the rain. Amen. Do you do that? I did that once and got sick of my <laughs> So, what you got to do? Go Peter. And everything, and everything you got to give thanks. Now, Lord willing, when we all go to heaven, one thing we will never stop doing is giving thanks. Now, I, I direct you to the person of the persons of the person who gave thanks. And that was the Lord Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty five. And what Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty five, he says, Father, I thank you. It's the only time Jesus said thank you, not to us, but to God. How many know thanks can never go to, uh, God never says to us, thank you. Because when you say thank you, you're indebted. So, Jesus says to the Father, thank you for that you have revealed to these little ones the truth of who I am. Isn't that great? Isn't that beautiful? Think about that for a moment. So, if you, want to, if you really want to get at all your worries, your anxieties, you, you, you're, you're, that means if you have all that, you don't give thanks enough. Yes? yes? That's why all of us are taught to give thanks before you eat your dinner. Even if it's chicken licking. Now giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. So God has made us his sons and his daughters. We're qualified. Everybody say, I'm qualified. I'm qualified. Now when you're qualified by God, that means you can go forth in his power. When God qualifies, that means he sends you. When he qualifies you, he empowers you. When he empowers you, you can do the kratos, the mighty deeds. But guess what? Not to shock anybody here. Most of you haven't done that. Why? Don't you want to do that? Even if I tell people that, they're, they're still looking at me like this. Don't you want to see the power of God? Yes. 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 Well, you want to look like this for the rest of your life. <laughs> so you're qualified. Everybody say, I'm qualified. I'm qualified. Okay, that means you, you, you as Jethro Bodine says, you graduated sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Jethro? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're, you're all qualified. God qualifies those who he what? Calls. Are you all called here? Yes. Are you all baptized here? Yes. yes. I just wish, can, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go up right now and shake all of you. Especially you. Okay. You're qualified. You're qualified for God showing up in your life. You're qualified for God doing healing signs and wonders in your life. You're qualified. Good news? Yep. Yes. Isn't this great? So you're qualified to share the inheritance of the saints in light. Everybody circle the word saints. When saints in the Bible are mentioned, it's always in the plural because it's the, one of the first words for the believers in Jesus. So that's why I call you saints. I don't even say saints in the making. I call you saints because Paul doesn't say saints in the making. He calls you saints. Now, what, what does a saint mean? You're separated for God. The Greek word is hagios, H-A-G-I-O-S. You're separated for God to do things. Yes? yes? You're separated for God to see the power of God come forth. Yes? yes. Now, he says that we are saints in the light. So if you're empowered to do this, wherever you go, you shine the light. You see, Jesus says to us in John 8, 12, I'm the light of the world. Jesus says to us in Matthew 5, 16, you're the light of the world. It's the only title that Jesus has he shares with us. So now that we are qualified, we get the inheritance. Why do we get the inheritance? Because he died. So because there's been a death, you all got the inheritance. But you know what's really sad? Most of us will never use our inheritance our whole lives. Can I make a suggestion to you? Use it. How much money do you got? It never runs out. <laughs> so you don't have to sing that song. If I were a rich man, ya da 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 da. I am rich. I'm loaded, baby. You know why? Because Psalm 50 says, "My father has all the cattle on all the hill." So the inheritance happened. Now, what does it mean when you get the inheritance? 
When, the, when Jesus died on the cross, several things happened to you. You are not cursed. How many of you ever felt you're under a curse? You're not cursed people. It means, number one, you, 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 sickness can never overcome you. Sickness can never overcome you. Sickness can never overcome you. Okay, amen? Amen. So, when the doctor tells me stuff about my body, I said, oh, is that all? <laughs> Sir, I don't understand. You didn't hear what I said. Your blood pressure's out of whack. I said, these things happen. <laughs> Wait, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and then I call it Edna, but I feel fine. So the first thing is, sickness can't overcome me. Amen. How many want to have a great rest of your life? Amen. Number two, Satan can't destroy you. So we got, we got, we got and sin, and, and sin, sin that I have committed is all gone. The sin that I've committed is all gone. How many know you're not cursed? Nobody here can accuse me of any of my sins. They're all what? Gone. Sickness can what? Not affect me. And Satan is under my feet. How many know I'm going to have a great rest of my life? Now, you hear all these things. Are you hearing them? When are you going to apply them? Oh, Not jeez. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Jeez. So now what happens is you're all saints in light, yes? yes. You're in the light, yes? yes. You're light. Do, 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 do. Now, here's a phenomenal thing. He has, look at verse 13. Now, when you're Jewish, and which Paul was, when you're Jewish, they use a word for salvation that we don't use called deliverance. Did you ever hear that word deliverance? Yeah. Yeah. Now see, everybody in this room, you need a deliverance. You're cuckoo. <laughs> yeah. Amen? <laughs> Except me. Right. Okay, now, deliverance, when you hear the word deliverance, here's what you think of. He has deliverance. Deliverance means Egypt is no longer part of you. What's Egypt? Egypt was a great power of darkness on the earth that overcame the people of God for 430 years in Hasbrook Heights. <laughs> you know anybody that lives there? And it just overcame them. And so now you're delivered. They didn't say you're saved. In the New Testament we say we're what? We're saved. But you've got to be delivered. That means you're under what? Captivity. How many feel good that you've got an inheritance? I told you the three things that can't harm you anymore, and now you've been delivered. Everybody say, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Everybody say, I'm qualified. I'm qualified. So now, when you go with God, you don't have to apply for your job. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Did you ever have... Uh, I, I walked down, down the street here, and they said, I'm wanted. I said, I'm applying for a job. You know what the job is? You, you want another job? It's driving my car around and throwing pizzas at people all day long, you know? <laughs> so if anybody needs a job, down, down, they're hiring down, down the street. So I, I don't like to, because somebody has to interview you. But because of Jesus Christ, you don't have to be interviewed. You got the job already, all right? But some people aren't even working in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Are you getting this? Yes. Is this good stuff? Yes. You have delivered us from the dominion of darkness. Now, if you underline that, you should see another word coming out at you. Dominion. Let me show you where it is. If you hold your spot there, everybody got a spot holder? Travel all the way back to Genesis. Go to the first page of Genesis. First page. First page. Around verse 26, 27. Let's see if you can see in there the word dominion. Now, let's explain this. This, this, this is really deep. I, I could spend a whole night just on this verse. You see dominion in there? Now, when God first created us, now, now, you got to get this down. When God first created us, we were perfectly in the light. Are you ready for this? Are you getting the connection yet? Because Jesus died on the cross, even though I'm a broken human being, I'm better than that perfect man was. So will somebody say, wow? Wow. 
Because Jesus Christ redeemed me by his blood, the first man did not have that connection. Yeah, my Bible says he translated us. Okay, are, are you getting this? How many think you're... Now, now I, I'm, I, I wish I had a pill, or I wish I could shoot you all up, so to speak, with this information that you would be convicted and believe in it. Now, are you getting this yet? Are you getting this, ma'am? Yes. Now, you have been... Now, you, now look at the word dominion there. I will, uh, everybody see the word dominion? Did you find it? Yeah. Okay, now, let's do some really good study here. Now, how many... I, I'm trying to get you empowered up tonight so you don't look like this for the rest of your life because you're scaring me right now. <laughs> okay, verse 28. God says, be fruitful. God bless them. Everybody say, God bless me. God bless me. Now notice again, when it, when it says, God bless you, it's in the passive sense. It's something that's already done. Now when you were born, and God said, he'll never do that again. You were already being blessed if you just yield to what your life could be. But how many know it takes us a long time to wake up and realize that? The average person has said needs seven times to hear the gospel before he or she truly starts to even think about responding. Today there was a lady that came in from the Archdiocese and she told our bookkeeper what we all knew. And I know you want to know what she said. She said everywhere all the collections are spiraling down. You already know that. And so um, look for an interesting few years ahead of us. If the, the collections continue to go down, 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 the building starts to close, close, close. Right? Yeah. Are you getting this exciting news? So we're going to have to meet in, we're going to have to meet in Kathy's house again. So, now, we, we, now, it says be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Now, notice God doesn't say be fruitful and add. When you're in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's always multiplication. Is that good? Now, let me give you another point just on that. I don't know if we'll ever get back to Colossians tonight, but that's all right. Now, be fruitful and multiply. As believers in Jesus, you are into the multiplication table. But would you please do me a favor for your life? Stop just sticking with one times one is one. How many of us think you should advance a little bit? Get into high digits, baby. High digits. So... The multiplication begins when the power of God in my life is released more and more and more. Now the Holy Spirit has witnessed to me personally that's happening right in front of me right now. When I saw all these miracles be, are, are taking place, they're incredible. I, I'm like, I go to my room, I'm like, wow. You know, brain tumor kids are, are getting up out of, out of the seat. Wow, waves of heat are coming out of people, and the doctors are saying there's nothing wrong. Wow. Stage four uh, cancer is coming out and one guy's standing in the foyer and his tears are coming down and he's hugging his two girls. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. Wow, I go to Sloan Kettering and one guy has a bandana on his head, another brain tumor, and we pray over it and it's all gone. God is what? Molded. Guess what? God, when it means that God multiplies, he will never only show you one thing. It's two, it's three, it's for now. How many know God's into exponential? That's why you now see, very important to you, brothers and sisters, now you understand the feeding of the 5,000. Now, you, you see the feeding of the 5,000, which is mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's the only miracle story mentioned in all four of the Gospels, as you know. Why, why do we have that? Because when that happens, when you see multiplication tables, you know the power of God is in your midst. If I, if all of a sudden I just say, in Phoenix, Arizona, a person was healed today. Oh, that's really great. That's nice. We'd all clap. But if I said to you, in Richfield, New Jersey, 10 lepers upstairs have perfect skin right now, you go, it's that close to me? Whoa. Not one, two, three, four, 10. Whoa. How many think you get a little better excited than hearing it out in Phoenix? Okay? So now, as believers in Jesus, please understand, when you're transferred, you're qualified, 
God always qualifies those who calls, and when you're qualified, get ready for multiplications. Now, please don't sit there with, with uh, that kind of smile over here. Oh, it's not going to happen for me. You just sold yourself short, and guess what? If you say that one more time, you win. It's not going to happen for you because I wouldn't give it to you anyway. <laughs> you know, if I were God, I wouldn't give it to you. No, it's not going to happen to me. Uh, do you see what you're dealing with? How many know who's your worst enemy? You! Oh, the devil is. Oh, forget the devil. He's going to the cooker ultimately. How about you? Your mind. Your mind. Mind. Your mind. Mind. Your mind. Peter's talking to me. Are you getting this? No. Now watch it. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. And subdue it. Now subdue it means you work in the earth under the power of the Holy Spirit. This is before original sin came in. You work and watch it grow even more. You, you, there's no weeds where in, in, in Eden originally. In other words, I'm going to take care of it. You see, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, do you all have that power of the Holy Spirit in you? Yes, yes. When you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you have the power of subduing. Nothing formed against me will what? Prosper. Prosper. I told the people outside some bellowing, I, I told the people on Saturday that you've got to start to pray against the evil that you say. And, and here's what you do. I think you should have a little joy with God. You're not touching me. You're not coming near me. Amen? Now the next thing he says there, uh, and have dominion, underline that. See where the dominion is? Have dominion over what does it say there? It has dominion over the fish, fish and the sea, the, the birds, the air, over every living creature, over every living creature, over every living creature, over every living creature. Even even the dog that this lady spends four hundred dollar pills on. Would you, how many think, how many here would spend a three hundred twenty seven dollar pill on a dog? Okay. Nobody's with you, Miss Kathy. So forget it. I'm with you, Kathy. I know everybody is. So now. You have two powers. What are the two powers everybody in this room has? Number one, are you all believers? Yes. yes. We all have a living relationship with Jesus. Yes. You have the power, number one, of subduing everything around you. That you can bring it under, what's the last word of the Spirit? Self-control. When you're in the Holy Spirit, and you all are, you have the power to subdue everything. So, and and what, do, what do we do because our minds get kooky in, in the dark? Dark, man. Dark. You don't believe you have that power anymore. And secondly, which, which, which Paul is speaking of now, but this, remember Paul loved what? The book of Genesis. He loved Isaiah and he loved Genesis. You have the power of dominion. Now, what is dominion? Somebody say, what is dominion? What is dominion? Dominion is that I'm here and where I walk, the glory of God starts spreading all around me. How many would like to walk through life in Hasbro Kites and say, make my day? How many are afraid to go to certain places? You have the power of what? Dominion. Now, when God really comes to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which is on the way to happening, it says when, when King David got all of Israel under the Holy Spirit's control, it says from sea to sea was under dominion. So what happens is the power of God went this way, this way, this way, and this way, this way, this way, this way. And all the one gazillion directions all over you at all the different points on the compass. So how many would like to walk the rest of your life and have and use your power of dominion? By the way, you never heard a teaching on that before. The power of subduing and the power of dominion. So that, that's another record, a renewal day to teach you how to walk in the power of dominion. Would you like it? Yes. Okay, now, you walk in the power of dominion by knowing that I got an inheritance, that Jesus died for me. I gotta, go, I gotta know the first part. Is everybody getting this? Yes. yes. Now, are you using it, sir? Yes. No. Okay, so how many, will, how, many would like to, how many would like to learn the power of subduing? Okay. Do you use your subduer, ma'am? Or the power of dominion. Now, what does power of dominion? That the glory of God is gone. When I come somewhere, yes, go it's 
It's coming around. How many know I'm a compass? No laughing. Go ahead, you can say that to them. Okay, you got that? Okay, so. <laughs> Cookie people. Now, does everybody understand? Now, stay with me. And, and, uh, and God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of the earth, every tree with seed in its fruit. You have them for food. Now, the power of dominion has contained within it the seeds for more growth. Lord willing, when we all go to heaven again, I told, and you all know this, I told you about it many times, and you already read it uh, too many times before I told you one million. When you go to heaven, there's trees there. It's God's Italian. Yeah, da -da -da -da. So, so Anthony's going to like all the Italian fruit there. Do, 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 do. You know, we Italians, we have our dinner, and then we eat fruit afterwards. You eat, everybody's got to get their knife and just cut the fruit. And then what they do with it, the, and they just make the circle around, and it all comes off, the skin comes off. Did you see how they do that? Oh, with precision... Piece. Anthony cuts, Anthony cuts that fruit with precision. The, the, whole, the whole apple is, uh, it's, uh, and, the, and, the, and the skin just comes off with precision. I mean, you've got to be Italian to do that, though. You've got to get that skin off. Amen? Now, when you go to glory and you take off a fruit, what's going to appear? Two more, because the power supernatural seed, it's not just you've got to put it in the ground and watch it grow. When you use it to the glory of God, more what? Multiply. Are, are you getting this? Yeah, are, are you getting multiplication yet? So when Elijah is asked by Elisha, I want a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Good job, Elisha. What was Elisha saying? Multiply. That's why he does how many more miracles? He does double the amount of miracles. Amen? Now, I wish we could raise up in this room, just among you, <laughs> men and women, filled with faith, which you all are, to be multipliers. Are you a multiplier, sir? How many ever heard of Hobby Lobby? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. now, there, there's a book I just read by the Hobby Lobby guy. I loved it. He's a Christian. He goes to church every Sunday. They close on Sundays. And the man is worth a billion plus dollars. Now this is not a, a get rich scheme. I'm not telling you how to get rich. I don't believe in the prosperity gospel. But the man continually gives out excessively into the kingdom of God. And you can't contain it. How much he's receiving. How much he's receiving. How much he's... It's, it's incredible. So, what is Mr. Hobby Lobby doing? What's his name? David... Uh, Dan Kathy? Is that it? Or? Uh, uh, with David, I don't know if he's... Or David like something. David. And then it just it goes all the way out. So, Hobby Lobby has dominion. He's subduing the earth. Are you using your dominion, sir? Hmm. Okay, are you using it on Route 17? Okay, one day. Okay, does everybody get, everybody get the point? Go back with me to Colossians. This is a long explanation, isn't it? Yes. But how many know you're getting good stuff? Yes. yes. Are you getting good stuff there? Yes. Good. All right, so now, let's see what we got in Jesus. Jesus, what died? So, all right, let's write down what I got. I got inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. inheritance. Number two, I'm qualified. Everybody say I'm qualified. Oh. How many feel a little bit better about your life right about now? Yes. yes. Third is you have dominion. Now, notice what Paul says there. He has delivered. Are everybody with deliverance? He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness. So, what happened to our dominion in the book of Genesis when we, when we sinned? We didn't use it anymore. Because we didn't know that we got scared and we got petrified knowing that there was a talking snake. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So they listen to a talk. How many talking snakes do you listen to? She usually says like this. Well, hello, big boy. Come over here. Psst, come here. Come here. The lottery tonight is 
<laughs> you could be rich. Stand in the line and wait three hours in the cold in your pump tent. <laughs> The screen TV goes on sale, originally $3,000, but you wait in line. It could be yours for $150. I'm waiting on line. I'll go a pub tent. The first person in the door, it's me. Amen? Me. Me. Okay, now, the next thing is to meet in the dark. Next, uh, deliverance put down. Next, number five, transfer. Everybody say transfer. Right. Now, we were in the dominion of darkness. We lost our dominion because of what? Sick. We got sick thinking. What happens to our minds when we committed sin? Anybody ever hear sin? Every time you sin, your mind shuts down. And every time you sin, your mind goes nuts. And you come to me. <laughs> Amen? So you get sick thinking. Your mind shuts down every time you sin. Did you know that? And then you start acting out of... You act out. And then we get this word. You got issue, man? You got some issue? Amen? Oh, <laughs> We just have a musical commercial right now. <laughs> wait, wait, it's still going on? It's still going. <laughs> wait a minute, I'll be right back. Please help me. You want me to have patience? No, just, just. Okay, back to live action. Okay. So, how many realize you've been transferred? Now, what is the transfer? Now, let me describe it. Okay, are you getting this? Is this making sense? I am here. And I gotta get over there. So what does it mean to be transferred? Somebody has to pick me up and deposit me here. You're getting too fat. Alright, amen. Now transfer is one of the greatest powers that Christ has ever done for you. Because you were in darkness, now you're in the light. Now here's darkness again. Darkness means Everything you do is clouded. Now, when people do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, they are in darkness. And guess what happens when you're in darkness? Ready? Hello? You know, this is really scary. Say to this person, actually, this is scary. When you're in darkness, you call God a liar. It's true. I'm doing, uh, I'm developing a new teaching, um, is even though you're going to see chaos continually hit our streets unless God does a revival of a prophetic nature among the believers here, you're going to see something very interesting. Here's my new talk. False prophets are rising. And guess what happens? Even though people don't want to hear about Jesus, they develop their own religion. Because what we have to do, even though we don't follow Jesus, we all, everybody in this room, whether you like it or not, you follow a religion. But you and I are about a relationship because your mind is dark. You're, you were created to follow something. You might follow yourself and make yourself king of the forest for a week. <laughs> but you, 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 will, you, will discover, you will discover that that's not going to work either. So, what happens then is you're transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Now, let me tell you what happened in that transfer. In the transfer, Jesus crosses infinity of time to get you. Jesus crosses where there was no path to get you. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, he's called a pioneer. Pioneer is somebody making a road where there was no road. You ever hear that saying, God will find the way where there seems to be no... Anybody ever hear that song? He knows what you are going through. He will find the way for you. 
Okay, I love that song. Do you like that song? And so, what happens then, that's why, you got to get this, Matthew 7, that's why the path to get back to Jesus is narrow. The path that Jesus makes, you ready for this? The path that transfers you is one person at a time. Now, everybody here is going to be judged by yourself with God. How many know you're going to get... <laughs> the narrow way is one person at a time. You're not going to all go to heaven, stand there, and the door is going to open, and you're not going to rush and go, No. It's one Philip at a time. One Peter at a time. One person at one Edna at a time. Just one by one. Okay, amen? One of all at a time. Okay? I think she'll be the only of all named person in the universe. Amen? You got, are you getting this? Now you're transferred from darkness. Now is that hard to do? Yes. Because... We are attracted to the darkness and we want to stay there because as we read in John 3, when the light is turned on, we have to squint because if you've been living in darkness all this time, you can't look at the light, can you? You've got to get adjusted to it. And so what Jesus does is to take the transfer, lift you up and have you walk on the narrow path that leads to life. Yes, ma'am? What's the difference between transfer and deliverance? What's the difference between transfer? Deliverance is breaking the bondage of that which held you. Deliverance is bringing you from there over to another side. You see, uh, Jesus, uh, God broke the, the power bondage of Egypt, right? Yes? And now, all right, now, the, the hell of Egypt is gone, so what do you do? You're sitting there. And so now, what are you going to be? You're going to be transferred here. So what did the ch children of Israel have to do, which is a great example? They had to, as soon as the blood was placed on the doors of the Exodus account, what did they have to do? They had to leave immediately. Why did they have to leave immediately after they conquered and everybody was dropping dead around them? Because the place was dark. And they had to transfer them. And so they walked one week eating matzah. So they eat the matzah without the salt on them because salt's not good for you. So, amen. So they, they walk the path, the, the narrow path that leads to life. Of his beloved son. Now this is the kingdom. Underline the word kingdom. When you're in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God means this. The kingdom of God means everything you want to live for. It's life right in front of you. It's God living his life through you in the community. How many want to live in the kingdom? Now, hopefully everybody here is experiencing some good things about the kingdom of God. Are you? Yes. Probably, if, if you love God, you can give me about a thousand things right now of the kingdom of God means to you. But everything that we're experiencing, number two, there's more to come. Everything we experience now has to bow down to what's coming. Wow, how many know this is really great? So now we're about the kingdom of God. What does kingdom mean? The rule of God. What does the kingdom mean? We're subject to God. So we're subject to ourselves we're in darkness. Now, we had an ancient father called the devil. If you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your father still is the devil. It really is. And now, let me prove it to you. Do you still lie? Are you still being deceived? You still cheat? That's the devil. Are you still disillusioned? I don't know I'm where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. You're under the old evil. You're under your old father still. When are you going to break loose? When are you going to say, I want out of here? Because Christ, when he, when he died on the cross, all of your jail cells are open. For heaven's sakes, come on out. Stop staying there and sitting in your muck. What's St. Francis' favorite psalm? Psalm 69. What's the first words of Psalm 69? I sit in muck. That's the loose translation. You might say mud. Amen? 
Okay? Turn to the person next to you and say, get out of your muck. Get out of your muck. And no cursing, get out of your muck. Okay. Get out of your muck. Hey, man. Now, this happens, look at verse 13. We only did a verse and a half so far. That's true. Um, now, the next, the next part is, all right, so we have been what? We give thanks, we have been qualified, we have an inheritance, we've been delivered, we have dominion, we've been transferred. Now, wow, this is, this is even getting better. The, the, the verse 14, we've been redeemed. Everybody say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Now, the word redemption means to be brought back. To be brought back. Now, originally, all of us, God made us, yes? Yes. When you're this big inside your mother? Yes. I, I was teaching the kids again yesterday. I said, look, we all have your birthdays, but you really got to, for most people in the room, you got to go back nine months. That's when God created you. So, what month did God create all of you? Go back nine months from your birth, if you were not a premium, of course. Okay, amen? Go back nine months, and that's when Peter said you were not. That's when God started to, to put Peter together. And there was Peter right in there, with all of his everything in there. And, and God says, there is Peter. Now, what happened is, that little person in there first was born under the seed of, of death and darkness. So God says, I'm buying back. He's mine. So he has to die and take his place because that's the penalty. Now, Galatians 4 says this, you've got to be publicly recognized by God to be redeemed. Is that deep or why? Okay, you've got to be publicly recognized by God as being redeemed. Where God says, you're my son, you're my daughter. Now, this is one of the only times in the Bible, there's another passage in Luke, where we have the word redemption. Ephesians, redemption. Very few times in the Bible we have, I am redeemed. Now, Sally, and I apologize deeply to all of you, you have not been taught to say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. How many feel good? Remember growing up, we used to do the green stamps? Do you remember the green stamps there? You know, I, right? I think we should bring them back again. You know, I couldn't wait to get the green stamps. I, I, I always wanted a plate. Did you want the plates? And this week, you get the plates. Next week, you get the pots. Next week, you get the coffee. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? You forgot that. And so, it, it, when, it, it's true. I was a cashier, and it really went nuts. When all of a sudden, they said, Double coupon, I went. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the old ladies are there. Take it off, honey. Take it off. <laughs> Did you do double, honey? And then if they had a special day, triple, I went, nah. <laughs> take it off, take it off, take it off. <laughs> and what were they doing? They wanted to be <coughs> redempt. They wanted some of their money back. To redeem They want some money. Amen? Give me some money. You got the money, honey, I got the time. And so, redemption is, now, do you know what was paid for you, sir? Fifth, uh, um, there, there was paid for you, I, I hope you know this, 15 liters of blood was paid for you. 15 liters of blood of Jesus. Did it work yet? 15 gallons of blood was paid, poured out for you. What are you doing with that blood poured out, sir? Now, so I've been, re underline that, so the last thing here is, I've been redeemed. I'm brought back. Now put that all together. Put these two verses together. After you prayed positively for somebody, you should be the healthiest person in the world. But I look at you. I'm not judging, just observing, just observing. Amen? Amen? Put all those things together. Wow, isn't it? Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Ain't it grand? Yes? So I've been redeemed now. Look at the last thing. Redeemed now. The last thing is, and here's what the Holy Spirit's been sharing with me last month. And you got to do this, sir. Forget about your past. Amen. so hard. 
No, no yawning. Turn to the person next to you. Forget about your past. Now, in this present day church, I'm learning to be pastoral. That means people come to me with all kinds of problems, which years ago is called, and still is, blatant immorality. I'm like, oh, yeah. And they want to get married. I'm like, okay. Hi. Oh. Okay. How many children do you have? Three. That's great. That's so beautiful. Squeeze their cheeks. You haven't been married yet? No. Oh. Okay. Amen. Amen. Do you see what I got to go through? One man said to me yesterday, I don't want your job. I said, I don't, I don't want it either. either. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So now, you've got to learn all, how many love this fact that all of your sins are gone? Amen. Totally gone. All right, everybody do the happy dance. <laughs> okay, you didn't do the happy dance, sir. All my sins are gone. Now remember, forgiveness means it's been okay, all now. sent away. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, If all the people, if all your sins are gone, so many people believe that then they can do anything because all your sins are forgiven. No, once they're all gone, you start all over again. <laughs> Well, I've had no problem with that. I wish I could say to everybody in this room, and if I could, I would, ladies and gentlemen, all your debts are gone. <laughs> I wish you could say all it. All your debts. Yes. You, I wish you could say Now, from this day forward, you'll get no more bills in the mail tomorrow. Yes. Oh, yes. Your mortgage is paid. Yes, your car, your interest in car is all paid. Yes. It's all paid. Your car is paid. How many, how many would do the happy dance? <laughs> now... How many know all of us would start a brand new bill? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we run it right back. When I left St. Antoninus, I gave the pastor that's there now. Guess how much he owed when he walked in? <coughs> how many would like to go into a church and owe nothing? Every bill was paid. Every single bill. So, guess what? The year of Jubilee. Everybody write in there, your bell. Y-O-B-E-L. This is the year when you have Jesus. Do you all have Jesus? Yes. I hope so. Every, not I hope so, that's false humility. I hope. <laughs> when you have Jesus, all your sins are gone. The accuser of the brethren is cast out. Revelation 12, 13, and 14. How many think you're hearing good news tonight? Yes. How many like the new you now? Wait a minute, wait, I'll be right back. <laughs> Anybody like the new you yet? This is you. This is what Christ has done for each of us. I think, I think we should take it, right? Let me tell you something. You'll never have a better offer than this ever. Because you go to all the other world religions, they put you down. They put you down. Don't let anybody put you down. Now, verse number 15. Now, if you look at 15 to, 15 to, uh, 15 to 19... We're going to do an interesting study here, and this could probably take the whole night. We're going to look at angels. Do you like angels? Yes. Okay, we're going to give you the angels, and we're going to tell you how to use them now. This is really spiritual warfare. Are, are you taking, yes. are you absorbing yes. all this in? Now, th you're getting good stuff. Turn to the person next to you. I'm getting good stuff. Now, this is called, if you box in 15 down through 20, this is called a, Chris, I'm going to use a big word, I'm sorry, a Christological hymn. You have the word Christ in there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's just an um, adjective. I don't know if you passed Grammar 101. Some of us didn't do well in grammar. It's a name for Jesus. It's all glory and honor belong to Jesus. Jesus. So this is Christological. Now, if you box in there, here's, here's the interesting tidbit. They sang this in the first century. So, Patty Petunia will get up and sing to, to music, okay? Yes. So, this is a song that's on. How many of most of our songs, if they're anyway halfway decent, 
they should come from the Psalms, yes, they should come biblically. We should be singing biblical songs. Are you getting this? Yeah. Okay, that's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 down through 20. So we should be getting a whole sense here now of really how to... So let's get into angels. you like angels? Yes. Right now, I'm, we're going to tell you how to use them. How many choirs are there? Nine. 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 Very good. All right, do you know all nine? No. I forget. Seraphim. You know them all, Brother David? Oh, your father knows them all? He knows. Okay, let's go, let's go through the angels now. He is the image. Okay, everybody underline the word image there. The Greek word for image is icon. How many ever heard of a copy machine called icon? He is the icon. Is that a great word? He is the icon. That means when you look at Jesus, you look at the exact image. Who is the exact image? The Father. Whoa. This is a deep book, isn't it? He is the icon of the invisible God. You see, your role as a believer in Jesus is to take that which is invisible and make it visible. Let me give you an example, of course. What I've been just saying. I would say God has the power to do certain things, heal people. What would you say to me? Show me. It just happened upstairs four or five times upstairs. Didn't you see it? Psoriasis disappeared. That's impossible to be healed of. A brain tumor, the kid has six months, she's still walking around. A person had no bones in her feet. <clears throat> she went to the doctor. Bones are there. So, what are we saying? That's, I'm making these declarations in the invisible kingdom, but now you're seeing it what? Visibly. Now here's how I'm going to win people to Christ. I'm making, and I do make, an incredible amount of invisible <coughs> kingdom words. And all of a sudden I just say your sins are forgiven. That's good news, isn't it? But now you've got to experience that. How do you experience that? I'll take that. I'll own it. And how many know you could do the happy dance for the rest of your life? All your sins are gone. But you've got to own it. And when you own it, you'll see yourself being, there's that big word again, transferred from darkness into the light. Okay, you got it? When that starts happening, then you have a personal experience of making a declaration with the Word of God and now everybody gets to see it. And this person, because he experiences it, and when he experiences it, it's so obvious. And when it's so obvious, you sit out there and say, I want it too. That's right. Because Christ is the real. Not because of the person. You want the results that that person's seeing, right? right? And this person is trying to tell all of you, these are some of the results you should be having. But why aren't you having them? Because your mindset is sick. You're in the darkness. You've got to be transferred into the light. Amen? Yeah. I'm nobody special to see these things happening. But I don't hear you ever telling me stories like this. When are you going to start telling me some stories? You're better prayers than I am. Oh, pray for me. you got special prayers. Special. I'm a specialist. <laughs> Was Christ the creation right? Yes. Okay, now, now you're getting this? So, what's my role, our role? It's to take the invisible and show that this really works. Out upstairs, they're dying upstairs. I'm bringing a wheelchair at seven, uh, a wheelbarrow, not a wheelchair, a wheelbarrow, and say, three, please throw out the dead bodies. And all of a sudden, I saw one lady take her husband and went, and, and threw him into a wheelbarrow, and all of a sudden, I'm not dead yet. Okay, amen. Amen? Are you getting this? So, how many here want to start showing the invisible kingdom into visible? Yes? yes. Then he says to us, He's the firstborn of all creation. I'm lying firstborn. What's the firstborn? The firstborn came from the dead. How many think this is good? You're hearing a lot of good news. Now, when we all go to heaven one day, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 says, 21. 
it says that we are all the firstborn from the dead. I get full what? Inheritance. So he's the firstborn of all creation. Proverbs chapter 8 and 9. You are the firstborn from the dead with Jesus. Amen? Amen. What happened to Jesus is going to happen to you if you have this living relationship. Let me tell you what it means to have a living relationship with Jesus. Even on a super positive, everything that happened to him in power is going to happen to you. How many want it now? We're selfish, aren't we? <laughs> and guess what? I never have to go for the lottery for the rest of my life. Of course, if you want to share it with me, you're more than welcome to share the lottery with me. Amen? I know one lady that goes to Manhattan, she gets excited when she sees buttons. Can you imagine the excitement over buttons? I, I mean, can you believe I see these things? Okay, no. She doesn't want lottery, she wants buttons. I mean, that, 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 that's... that's and you know what she sings when she sees button? Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Okay, I mean, that means. Now, now, now you know my life is really interesting. Oh, happy day. So, how many would like to see? Now, the problem is, the reason why they're not converting, your family is not coming in. Say you had an interesting daughter. Say you had interesting kids. They're not coming. You know why? They don't see enough of the power. They don't see it. All she says, got a church, now, got a church, now. That doesn't help. But when you come in like this from church, <laughs> and you go up to your son, hello. <laughs> Even this lady with the cat goes, the cat goes, <laughs> amen. Amen? Are you saying this? <coughs> what are you laughing for, ma'am? <laughs> are, are you getting this? It's that seat. Amen? It is that seat. It's that seat. Ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> uh, we have somebody over here that's losing it. Next, he says there, first word, for, now, now put a little note by verse 16. Now we're going to get into angels. We're going to get into angels. You ready for the angels? Yes. yes. Now, I got startling information for you about angels. This is really good. I did a whole series on angels, by the way. We did a whole Bible study for nine, ten weeks just on angels. Would you like that study again? Maybe yes. we should do angels yes. bow before him. Yes. Okay. Like okay. You like angels? Yes. You know, people put them over here and everything okay. else. And Christmas time and everything else. Okay, so now. <laughs> notice here in verse 16. Jesus is the creator. This is where uh, you get the information that God and Jesus created you. Did you know that? Now, going on Catholic, you always say God the Father created you. That's correct, but not really the, the, the pinpoint. The pinpoint is Jesus created you. Did you know that? Are you learning anything new? Now watch this. All right, let's go through all the angels. Do you know them all by heart? No. How many are there? Nine. Nine, Nine choirs of angels. Dun, 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 dun. Now, what's the first <laughs> choir of angels? Seraphim. What's the second? Cherubim. Now, I've been wrestling with a problem my whole life. I always believed Satan was a seraphim angel. Now, the word seraphim means burning ones. When you look at the book of Numbers, chapter 21, they had snakes that came out. They were red. I, I hate snakes, but seeing a red one would really go nuts. You ever see a red snake? And, um, and when they bit you, you burn, burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Okay? You burned, and then you dropped. Now, then I turn the page, and it gets to Ezekiel 28. And then it says, Satan is a cherubim angel. I said, wait a minute. Wait one minute. How can he be a seraphim? And then how can he be a cherubim? Well, of course, he's, he's so two-faced, uh, three-faced, and four-faced. Right. Here's the answer I finally got. I finally got an answer. I asked God's questions. This has been a question I have for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I just recently got it. In heaven, he said, seraphim, which he says, I burn before the throne of God. 
he turned around and he said, worship me. When he came here on the planet, he became a cherubim angel. Ezekiel 28 says he walked through the garden. Look at Ezekiel 28. It talks about his garden walk. And when you read the garden walk in Ezekiel 28, it talks about all the jewelry that was there. Amen? You like jewelry. I don't wear any of it. Amen? Because I'm rich on the inside. Are you getting this? So now, let's, let's read about these. So we have, now, the cherubim, if you circle the word cherubim, or, or think of the word cherubim with me, the cherubim are mercy angels. The cherubim are mercy angels. You got that? Because in the Ark of the Covenant, God told them to make jagunda angels of cherubim status, that their wingspan covered 40 feet. That's a lot, right? What's 40 feet? Yeah. Alright, so if you want to see a wing, what, 40 feet? You, 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 got, you got the dimensions of 40 feet? Okay? So when you went into the Ark of the Covenant in the first temple, you see one angel here and one angel here. And their wing tip covered to wing tip 40 feet with 40 feet. That's a big mama. Amen? So, they were the cherubim. When you go all the way down underneath, there's the Ark of the Covenant, and there's some more angels. Whoa. So how many know God likes angels? So now... What now, are the seraphim? What's the seraphim? Yeah. The seraphim are right on the throne. The seraphim angels are right on the throne. They burn, baby burn. How many know, excuse the expression, they're lit? Okay? No, I don't mean if you've ever been lit. <coughs> okay, I don't want to hear about your past days when you were lit. Why did I? Uh, 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 I'm so happy and numb. Uh, amen. So, they were literally lit with the fire of God. In the book of Revelation, there are seven spirits that appear before the throne. And this is the full powering of the Holy Spirit. Lit, lit torches of God. Next he says there, in him all things were created. Okay, underline that. In him, who's the him? Jesus. All things were created. So Jesus creates. Look at verse 16. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Now, right before you, right now, the, the Christian belief is everybody here has an angel right next to you. Yes. Yes. Now, if you want to have service of that angel, you got to start sending him. Psalm 90 says you ask God permission for him to go. How many have a few people you want to get? <laughs> ask God permission, Psalm 90, 91, to send the angel to that person. Okay? Um, you ask God to send the angel. Your angel, yes ma'am. Good luck. <laughs> now, who do we have? We have so everybody get the verse two? Yeah. Seraphim? And Cherubim. Cherubim. Right now, let's look at the next one. Throne. See the third group of angels? What's the next one? Dominion. Dominion. Didn't we hear that word before? Now, not to get it confused with the, the power of dominion. So, what do you think these angels do? They have the power of spreading. You got it? Now, what do you think thrones do? They have the power of bringing forth the majesty. How many like these angels already? They all have different jobs. They all have, I like what you said. Mm -hmm. They all have different jobs. Right, how many groups of angels are them? Four. All right, who's the next one? All right, this, the next one there, it says, uh, for principalities. Now, a principality, and this is, they're both bad ones and good ones. Now, when I was going to try to sleep in inner city Newark every night, <laughs> there was a bar right across the street. And bars empty out 4 to 5 a.m. So that's what time I started to go to sleep. 4 to 5 a.m. So when people call me at 11 a.m., I'm sorry to wake you up, but I've been up. Now, a principality is when a 
certain force takes over an area. How many have ever seen an area taken over by a certain evil force? Yes. Yes. That's called a principality. So now what are you going to do? You know what we have done before? Don't tell anybody. This is not being recorded, is it, ma'am? Yes, yes. We wanted our church to be so alive with the Spirit, we claimed the evil that's lodged against it to be broken. I prayed and I knelt down on my living room floor across the street and I said, break that power, that principality over that bar. And guess what? It's now a laundromat. It's clean. It's nice. When I saw the laundromat there, I did the happy dance. I said, now it happens. For 13 years, I prayed that that thing shut down. But the principalities there knocked it out. So there's good principalities. Now, let me give you a point. In Ephesians chapter 6, you don't wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. Listen, you wrestle against, listen, principalities. Mm -hmm. Now say you go home and you have a son or a daughter, a co-worker, whatever, a neighbor on drugs. And that's a common story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then guess what they're facing? A principality. Say a person's deep into depression. A principality. They so invaded your mind, they've taken it over. I told you I've done two exorcisms. There's a principality, not only take them over, that they live inside of the person. Jesus, you know that story with the little piggies on the other side of the Sea of Galilee where Irma wasn't walking. She was walking on this side of the Sea of Galilee, on the other side, the little piggies went in. Because Irma was afraid that little piggies would resurrect and attack her while she was taking walking lessons from the Lord. So what's a principality? When you see an area inundated with evil, it's a principality. So who do you war against every day? You war against principalities. And where, where do the principalities attack you? Ready, sir? Sir? Sir, your mind. Now, how many ever had bad thoughts? Nobody, very good. How many ever had a thought you just couldn't get rid of? Nobody, very good. These are called Ephesians 6. The enemy is always going. He <laughs> keeps sending it, and the arrows go. Put on the And sometimes you're standing there, you, you see the Hootsie Tootsie girls on TV. Whoa! Almost right inside, like that. And, and then you go. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, now. Okay, she's calmed down now. So what happened, what happened is, the burning arrow got where? Inside, into your eyes. How many ever had that happen to you? You're, you're, very, you're, you're very pure. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I hope you appreciate what I'm going to do to get my point of <laughs> Now, everything's fine. You're having a nice stroll. Then you get into an argument. And you're like, where did that just come from? <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Goodbye. Take me home. I'll forget I walk by. <laughs> How many know you walked into an area where there were principalities? All right, let's go for a drive tonight. I'll show you where there's principalities. One night I get a phone call. Father Bill, come to New York City with me. Why? <laughs> Because my brother just overdosed. Mm -hmm. And his temperature did not go up, it went down. down. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I ran into New York City, not my favorite place to go at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the, the man was in a coma. Mm -hmm. When he took the drugs, he was in a principality where there are drugs being given out. 
Now, what, if you really want to have a lot of a super fun in God, you walk around and you've got to bounce out the principalities. That's the evil principality. But notice now we have good principalities, right? It's time to fight, fight. I was with a group of men. They still, they're still around. They had, they had a group of Christian men called the Fight Club. <laughs> Usually they have houses like this. <laughs> oh, mine are that big too. I don't want to... I don't want to... <laughs> so these men had the Fight Club. But some of them were very scared of their own shadow. Like, what are you in the fight club for? <laughs> Amen. So, what happens? The principalities are at work. Let me give you a real life example. Okay. I was in a, in a town called Manville. How many know in New Jersey there's a town mm -hmm. called Manville? Yeah. 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 Okay. And they even have a Catholic church in town. Mm -hmm. And guess what everybody would make a light joke of? Frank's Chicken House. It's a Frank's Chicken House. Mm -hmm. I said, I guess you get chicken there. No, you get chicken legs and ladies' legs. <laughs> and so, guess what we had to do around Frank's Chicken House? You, we had to, there was a principality of pornography and prostitution going on there. So what did we have to do? We had to march around and call upon God to destroy that principality, amen? amen. The principalities are very powerful because they get you into unbelievable addictions. Mm -hmm. Now, what did Jesus create? So, number one, the who? Seraphim. 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 Number two, the who? Cherubim. Number three? Thrones. Number four? Dominions. Number five? Principalities. Principalities. Does everybody understand principalities? Now, the good principalities is, we gotta ask God to send the principalities here, that the glory of God, because people are coming in from damaged areas of this town being affected by the principality. Are you getting this? Yeah. How, how, how many like this fight up here? Yeah. Ready? Alright, I get it. Next. I'll be right with you. I'll be right with you. And the next one, I'll be right with you. The next one is authority. Okay, so what number is that? Six. 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 Okay, authorities. The, the, the one that's not on that list is virtues. Mm. So put in virtues. Okay, and then the last two put in archangels. The Jews have seven, Catholics have three mentioned names. And the last one are angels, which means messengers. Yes? I want to mention um, the abortion clinics. I mean, that's a principality there. Big, a Planned Parenthood is a, is a principality. Mm -hmm. So if, d does anybody pray in front of them? What you got to do is ask the Holy Spirit when you're marching, and i got to get back to marching with you, is to pray against the principality of death. The spirit of death, that's, that's there. Amen? Don't just march around. Yeah, you, you say your rosary, and that's good. Pray against the principality. Come on, use Holy Spirit power. What, what's going on here? Amen? Yeah, amen. Right. Did everybody get all nine? Yes. yes. Did you get the uh, sister of them? Archangels and angels. Now, the archangels, you, you, you know that... Now, remember with angels. Remember with angels. All of the angels end in E-L. Mike El, Gabriel, mm. Raphael. Mm. And it's the word for God. Oh. El is the Hebrew word for God. Mm. Somebody go, hmm. Mm. Father, oh, that's the Jewish one. Father, did do all the Jewish um, um, archangels send in El? Yes. Too? What are the, uh, yeah. sister, uh, sister uh, what is your name? Avon? Want to read the angels? Michael, Michael, Raphael, Raphael, Uriel, Uriel, which means light, the god of light. Mm -hmm. Uriel, who? Uriel, yeah. Okay, yeah. there are different renditions of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the Jewish seven archangels. All right, she's got her sheet there. Oh my heavens, these are interesting names. All right, I, I have a different rendition of the names: Michael, Gabriel, 
Oriel, which means light. Mm -hmm. Yehudia, which means praise. Can, you spell mm -hmm. that, please? Can we spell that, please? Y e h u d i e l. Mm -hmm. I have a different. I have a different list. Mm -hmm. Belfagor. Belfagor. Yeah, sure. B e l f e g o r. Bel Bel Belfagor. B e l f e g o r. Next one is. Barakiel, B A R Barra, which means creation. Mm. Kiel, Q U I E L, Barakiel. These are not the ones I am familiar mm. with. Uh, Shiatiel, do we got them all? S E A L T I E L, Shiatiel. You got them all? Yeah. Okay, I, I got a, I got some different renditions. I need a blackboard to write them down, which is uh, away from me. Brother Peter. Okay, you got all you got all the angels? There's nine choirs of angels. Do you get them all? Nine. Well that's seven archangels. Seven The Jewish archangels are seven. The Catholic angels are three. Okay. Alright, now that's that's angels. So notice now we get a teaching on all these angels. Why do we get teachings on angels? Because Psalm 8 says that the Son of Man became lower than the angels. Jesus is called the Son of what? Man, and he's lower than the what? Angels. angels. You getting that? So now we have we have all these created angels. Then he says there, uh, verse number 16, all things were created through him and for him. Everybody put in their prayer. Time is almost up. Did we do any verses tonight? <laughs> okay. Now, if you underline the next line there, this is called a doxology. How many have heard of through him, with him, in him? Did you ever hear that before? Okay, now, what goes on in every mass upstairs? Through him, with him, in him. But this is the way you say it. You don't say it to priest. You stand up and go. Now, if you're giving all praise to Jesus, through him, with him, and yes. Amen? Amen. Then you should be seeing the glory of God, the angels doing the happy dance. Do you see that every church service? Yes. No. Yes. So here, here we have, um, um, uh, if you want, I'll, I'll give you my rendition of the Jewish seven angels. I'll give you the. Um, uh, where the thrones are dominions, principalities, or authorities, he is before all things. So Jesus put in there pre existence. Mm -hmm. Jesus pre existence. Does everybody know that? In fact, Jesus never had a, what, a beginning as God. God from God, light from light, true, true God, God and true God. He is before all things, and all things he holds together. As soon as Jesus gives word and stands up at the right side of the Father, the second coming comes, and it's over at life as we know it. Verse number 18. He is the head of the body, the church. So that's why we are attached to him. That's why Paul calls us later on in Corinthians 12, the body of Christ. The church. He is the beginning the Alpha, the firstborn from the dead. He's the first one that rose from the dead, John 11 and 25. That in everything he might be preeminent. He holds everything together. He's all powerful. He starts everything. He begins everything. Now, underline this. Look at verse 19. For in him, now, when you meet a Jehovah, Lord save us from those people. <laughs> There is a group of people at the end of the first century when John writes 1 John, they're called Gnostics. How many know the Jehovah Witness are the Gnostics re reinvented? <clears throat> because they don't believe in hell, and there is. They don't believe that Jesus is God, and he definitely is. So they, 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 they bastardized the scripture, they subdued everything about Jesus. And they even said that his brother was Michael the Archangel. Would you give me a break? <laughs> Amen. And that he appeared invisibly over Hasbrook Heights in 1914. <laughs> if you're in Hasbrook Heights, I would think twice about living there. Amen. So, uh, 1914, he appeared on the earth. Give me a break, will you? Amen. Amen. Then he says to us there, then, uh, so underline verse 19, now in him the fullness. Now that's one of Paul's favorite words. Everybody say fullness. Fullness. The Greek word is pleroma. P-L-E-R-O-M-A. P -L -E 
R O M A. Everybody say pleroma. Pleroma. That means the fullness. Now, let's check your smartness. If something is full, can it get any fuller? What would happen if it's full and it makes you know, fuller? It would flow over. Amen? If you fill your cup to the brim, are you filled to the brim with the grace of God, sir? Yes. Hmm. So can you get any more fuller if you have got the full grace of God? So here's what I want you to do. Every day you wake up, ask for the full grace of God upon you. Now, in Jesus is the fullness of God, Mr. Jehovah. The word doesn't exist, by the way, in Hebrew. Does not exist. Forget about it. Bring all those Jehovahs to me. In fact, let's do something. Nobody go home tonight. We're marching over right behind the school to the Jehovahs. We're going to say, you visited me so time. Look at my family here. We're visiting you right now. <laughs> And Peter will, will, will splurge for the dinner. Now, so he's preeminent, he's before all things, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. All the fullness, all the fullness, all the fullness, all the fullness is in Jesus. Hello, put in there a proof of the deity of Jesus. God from God, life from light, true God from true God, he is fully God. What does it mean? The fullness of, of God is in him. Hello? Can someone translate that for me? He's God. The fullness of God is in him. He's God. Oh, yeah. Bible scholars, what does that mean to you? He is God. He's God. So stop walking around hospitals every day. Get to that, that place in the back of the school there. Get to those Jehovah's. You would keep them talking for years to come. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then, by the way, they do scrutinies there. You become a Jehovah and they want to excommunicate you, they sit you in a circle with all their grand poobahs. Mm. Can you see Brother Tony in a circle with all the <laughs> how many, how, You know, I would pay to see that. I would absolutely pay to see that. Amen? So they do scrutinies on you. Amen? And how many know if they don't produce a knock on doors? Is it, you know, have you been visited like 300 times yeah. a year? You know why they got to do that? Because they check their car. They got to punch a car that they do 20 hours. And they'll say, Brother Tony, front and center, you did not do your 20 hours. Why? And then you get scrutiny. Amen? And then now, under my verse 19, for in Him, who's the Him? Jesus. All. What does all mean? All. Fullness. What does fullness mean? The fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Look at verse 20. And through Him, now here comes another teaching, we're done. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Now reconcile means this. To make a bridge where there is none. Do you remember being on the Golden Gate the other day? Yes. Sister, Sister Lee was on the Golden Gate. And she saw the cloud coming right on the Golden Gate. Everything will come together. Everything's come now. All things right. to come together for good for those who love God. It's going to work out, ma'am. Right. You just smile at your sister. It's going to work out. That's good. It's going to work out. It's going to work. So when I go to Florida in June, forever and ever, it's going to work out. Okay? Amen? It's going to work out. I plead all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace. We're done. What's peace? Irene. The condition we are always meant to be in. That's what peace means. The condition we are always meant to be in by God. How do you get peace? Through the blood of the cross. The blood. You're only saved by the power of the blood. And I wish, and I pray, and I hope that everybody in here can start talking more about the power of the blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of the Lamb. And the Catholics, whether you know it or not, have a whole month dedicated to the blood mm -hmm. and nobody talks yeah. about it. Is that great or what? The power of the blood of the Lamb. Making peace by the blood of His cross. How many had a good Bible study tonight? Yes. yes. Anybody? It's power packed, isn't it? <coughs> um, Lord willing, we'll continue next week. And maybe we'll get to our chapter two on the great <laughs> book of Colossians. And ma'am, you were laughing too much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just uh, we ask your blessings upon us. 
And in the power of the mighty spirit of God, we just ask your super blessings that we can see the invisible made visible in each of our daily lives. In the precious and all kinding name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. We have wonderful new people. And hi, how are you guys? It's good to see you again. What's everybody's name again? Lenny the third, Lenny the fourth. Thank you for coming. Now, what town are you from, Green Bay? I'm originally from Richfield. Well, where the heck you been? Well, I moved down. We live down in and you know, always. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Let's welcome them. Amen. Very good. Excellent. Well, I 